What I will argue here today very simply is this, that you and I have been fed a lie. The lie is about this great idea called small business. Start one, just start, they tell you, and stay small. Never disrupt, don't move things too much. Employ a person, maybe two. If you show me one thing that you and I look at around here today that's been changed or fundamentally disrupted by a small business, you will not find it. My contention is that whilst there was a deliberate system that sought to keep us as a people disenfranchised, the greatest victory of that system is not that it kept black people disenfranchised, it's that it taught you and I that it's okay to think and do small. And this is a lie that's been fed so much to us that we believe it. We believe it, it's permeated even in our education systems, we believe it. And so when we start businesses, we think small. I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs I see start a business, register, go to the bank, open, get a bank account, go to SARS, get a tax clearance, and then start filling out database registration forms just to get that one tender. Because we're all thinking in a linear fashion, we're all thinking small. What's really required is for us to create hyper growth entrepreneurs. The thing here is these people are very rare, very rare. Because one, they take the long-term view. Two, they don't believe in their own PR. Three, they understand the value of networks is not the network, but the ability to unlock value in that network. And three and four, but perhaps most importantly, is they understand the value of education. Not a degree, not a certificate, education. Each and every single person in this room has a Facebook account, yet the creator of Facebook doesn't know any of you exist. Because the power of what the Americans do is they teach their children to think and build for the global community. We teach them to think and build for the people around the corner. And what we need in South Africa today is we need a philosophy of thinking. We need people that are going to build businesses on the premise of a philosophy. What do I mean by philosophy? Something that is just not relevant to the time. So when Steve Jobs started Apple, what did he say? He said, I want to build a business that will enable humanity and computers to have an intuitive relationship. That's why an Apple is easier and more friendly to use than an Android device. It's not by mistake. So what do we need to do? We need to start building businesses with philosophies. Not just another me too business or just another sustained business, but a true business with a philosophy. And a business with a philosophy is a business that has an idea so strong that the idea transcends time, transcends culture, transcends people. The idea holds. Second thing is we need a strong system of mentorship. This is a real problem because those of us that make it never go back to help those that haven't. If I may, and my fellow South Africans of different demographics, please excuse me for a moment. Let me say this to my people. Us as a people must be the only people that measure our success, not by how many other successes we create, but by how many failures we see around us. We make money, we move out, we buy fancy cars. Then every Saturday we go back to the places from which we come. We find our friends who couldn't make it out. We stand with them at the Shisanyama just so we can show the little that we've amassed. And until we create a mindset where we go back to build those who need to be built, we will not create a better South Africa. The third, and I feel really strongly about this, but we really need to begin to reward a culture of delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. Delayed gratification doesn't mean no gratification. It just means if you can wait, wait because your time and opportunity will come this is a culture of conspicuous consumption where because you have it you need to show you have it you ever thought about what we do we buy things we don't need to impress people we don't like who won't even remember that we bought those things it is the most fascinating mental thinking and so what I'm saying here is we need to think about starting businesses just start Throw away the business plan. Start, start badly, make a mistake, fail, make a big hamoras, come back, do it again. But just start. Now that I've told you what I've told you, let me tell you why after over a decade of speaking 
in now 49 countries around the world. You are likely to walk out of this room and do absolutely nothing about what I've told you. See, it hit me about six years ago that I was working with people all over the world and speaking. And yet every time I would speak, my business model depended on them not acting. So they'd bring me back again. So I issued my, I told my team, my research team, I said, find out for me, why do human beings look for new knowledge only to take the new knowledge and do exactly the same old things that we're doing with it before? It sounds stupid. And here's what we found. Each and every single person in this room is held prison by two biases. Two. The first is the confirmation bias. All of us live in a world where we look for information to confirm the beliefs we deeply hold. Because as human beings, we are hardwired to look for information that confirms the deeply held beliefs we have. The second thing is this, the status quo bias. Most of us like things the way they are. You know, human beings are fascinating creatures. We are the only creature that is adapt to change and yet hates making the change each time it needs to. The status quo bias simply says, you and I will look for every piece of evidence to support the status quo as we know it. This beautiful country of ours is at an interesting time. It is a time unlike any other. It is a time when we, all of us as South Africans, need to pull together to build a country worth living in. Because regardless of your race, I can assure you, we all want the same things. We do. It's the politics that divide us. Do you know what we want? You want a country where you can jog at 11 o'clock at night and you don't have to look over your shoulders. Where if you got harmed driving out of here and you went to a public hospital, you would get A-grade public hospital service. Where if you sent your child to the public school around the corner, they would receive a global standard of education. We all want the same things. But in truth, we are divided because we forget that what this country needs from all of us is a little bit of faith. What is faith? Faith is the ability to see the invisible, believe in the impossible, and trust in the unknown. And so I wish you, your companies and your families and this beautiful country of ours, just a little bit of faith.